The Senate has approved all options for the conduct of party primaries, and these include the direct, indirect, and consensus primaries. This is against its earlier stand on direct primary only for choosing of candidates vying for electoral offices. The direct primary clause had earlier hindered the assent to the bill by President Mohamed Buhari. At the resumption of its session, the Senate leader, Senator Yaya Abubakar, Kevin North, raised a motion for a recommittal to the Committee of the Whole. The Senate recalls that the present Commander-in-Chief has signified the withholding of his assent to the Electoral Act No. 6, 2010, Repeal and the Enactment Bill 2021, which was passed by the National Assembly and forwarded to the President for assent on the 18th of November 2021. Senate notes that the rationale for withholding the asset borders on his observation on clause 84 of that bill. Desirous of the need to address the observation by Mr. President Commander-in-Chief, a necessary amendment in accordance with Order 87C of Senate Standing Orders 2022 as amended, and in order secure this very important plank, vital plank of our legislative agenda, and relying also on Order 1B and Order 526 of the Senate Standing Orders 2022 as amended, uh, the Senate, according to the result, to rescind its decision on the effective clause as part and recommit the same to the Committee of the Whole for reconsideration. On his part, the Senate President, Ahmed Lawan, assured that the amendment to the controversial clause was to allow Nigerians exercise their franchise without being hindered. What we have done today is to respond to the observations of Mr. President and the calls by our constituents and other stakeholders on the need for us to expedite action on addressing those observations made by Mr. President, and we have done that very, very patriotically. Today, as the bill stands, there is provision for all the possible options for selection of candidates from the presidency to the councillorship. The available options we have, one, the direct primaries, two, the indirect primaries, three, the consensus candidature. What this means is political parties are now, once this becomes law, are now challenged to ensure that they choose what is appropriate, what is suitable for them when it comes to the processes of producing their candidates. I will urge that we should practice all these three so that we are able to develop them. However, against the perception However, against the perception that the parliament was cowed into taking President Buhari's proposal, the House, through its spokesman, Benjamin Carlo, insisted that the House acted to save democracy, noting that beside the controversial clause, there are so many other benefits as far as electoral reforms were concerned inherent in the bill. He explained further that, quote, we did not jettison direct primary, we only made it an option. Political parties are left with whichever options they prefer according to their realities. There are so many other benefits in the bill. I will consider position that the political parties should be allowed to freely exercise right of choice in deciding which of one, direct or two, indirect primaries to adopt in the conduct of their primary election as their respective realities may permit. This was specifically the letter that came from Mr. President, asking us to return what we used to have, which was primary should be conducted direct, through direct, or... Because of this specific mention 
of a specific clause, the house rule in order 12, rule 20, 21, 22, 23, says that when a bill is returned back to the House of Representatives that by the President, because he withdrew his arson, we have the option of resigning our former decision and working on only the specific clause. So today, gentlemen of the press and fellow Nigerians, we worked on what Mr. President proposed and we accepted that it will be good for our democracy at the moment to allow the electoral act be passed, electoral bill, uh, electoral act amendment bill to be passed into law uh, by adjusting our former position and allowing the direct and indirect primaries to go through. 13 civil society groups have rejected the introduction of consensus as a mode for the nomination of candidates seeking election into public offices in the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. The groups faltered the action of the Senate in a statement jointly signed hours after the lawmakers modified the proposed amendment to the Electoral Act. They claimed the consensus mode is antithetical to democratic principles and will result in the subversion of popular will, adding that it violates the rights of aspirants to equal participation in party primaries while limiting the choice of voters to candidates who did not emerge from democratic primary elections. Yaga Africa, International Press Center, Center for Citizens with Disability, the Albino Foundation, Clean Foundation, are among the 13 groups rejecting the Senate's decision. We are now joined by public affairs analyst, Mr. Shagun Chapiton. Good evening, Mr. Chapiton. Good evening, Warren. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. What do you make of the U-turn by both chambers of the National Assembly on this matter? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear that. What do you make of the U-turn by the Senate on this? Both chambers. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think um, on the one hand, you know, I, I generally tend to like the idea of the direct uh, primaries. I think that um, you know the intention of including that clause was to, um, um, if if you like, deliver Nigeria and the Nigeria political space from the Godfatherism factor in our leadership selection process. Um, we all know what happens during primaries when they when they do this indirectly. So it's, it's usually. The highest bidder. It's usually a case of the highest bidder. You know, a lot of money gets thrown around amongst the delegates at the conventions. You know, the jamboree. It's very, very embarrassing. Um, so, so on the face of it, the direct primaries would have been, you know, would be, it would be fantastic. However, there are problems. You know, and I think that you know those problems are, are the things that the president identified. Um, and that has now made the Senate to uh, reluctantly make this U-turn. Um, you know, so the first problem is, you know, those political parties, very few of them have a verifiable uh, um, voter register. If you don't have a voter register, then how do you conduct direct primaries? How can INEC supervise and actually ensure and guarantee that the outcome of those direct primaries um, is a reflection of the will of the entirety of the membership of that political party. You know, so um, if if we're to go by the way of direct primaries, the first thing will be for INEC to compel the political parties to clean up their voter register, their member register, if you like. Um, um, and that process is going to take time, it's going to cost money, you know, and all of that. So... Um, on the face of it, I like the idea of direct primaries, but I don't think it's practicable at this moment. That's one. Then secondly, um, I also think that because we're in a democracy, and democracy is about choice, sometimes um, it's anti-democratic anti to using legislation and fiat force certain provisions on the polity 
And I think that this law was, you know, this the act was pending in that direction. Um, if you ask me, uh, I probably would have preferred that, yes, even though it's a bit anti-democratic, let's enforce the direct primaries, you know. And it would have been fantastic to see for a change the Senate actually um, calling the bluff of the president and, and applying their, their, their power of veto. But we all knew that was never going to happen anyway. <laughs> you know, um, this, this Senate has never been known to stand up to the president for obvious reasons. So their U-turn, you know, didn't come as a surprise. We all saw it coming. Um, on, in, in the overall, I think it's in the best interest of Nigeria that they did make that U-turn because the alternative would have been um, for us to somehow find ourselves in a, in a, in a controversy and then we lose all of the benefits that are contained in that act in its entirety. And that okay, would have been so a what does this spell for political parties once the president gives this uh, bill the assent? Sorry, say that again. What does this spell for the political parties once the president assents to this bill? Oh, well, so, so what this means for the political parties is that, um, sadly, <laughs> Sadly, um, it's business as usual. Um, it means that APC can now do a convention, refuse to even vote at all, whether direct or indirect, and um, claim that they, by consensus, adopted a particular candidate for presidency or for governorship of a particular state or for local domain or whatever. You know, so. Um, it's just business as usual. In terms of how they select, you know, how they give the party ticket to candidates, it's business as usual. Okay, um, so what, what the thing um, now but, but is... I want to, yeah. Yeah, the thing now is uh, uh, that we need to have it quickly passed by the president, right? Yeah. That's the a quick Absolutely. passage of this bill into law by the president. Because even INEC is waiting for the bill to be signed before it can release its timetable. So this is crucial yeah. for the preparation uh, for the next elections. Yeah. You know, there, there's been a lot of um, conspiracy theories about why the president does not want to sign. People have expressed fears that this is just gamesmanship on the part of the president and his um, advisors and his party. Um, with the intention of uh, pushing us to the point where he can now refuse to assent based on that age-old argument of the ECOWAS um, treaty or the ECOWAS law that uh, forbids a new law being passed, um, I think, six months before the next election. You know, so, so those fears are, are still there. Um, and I think that what we what we should see is let the Senate very quickly amend this bill, like they've listed it now. So let's hope that they can get this done and over with in a you know in a matter of a week and push this thing back to the president, so that the president can assent, and so that INEC can get to work to release their schedule, the program towards you know the, the 2023 elections and the other elections. Let's not forget that there are some off cycle elections that will come up later later this year. You know, so um, I think it's absolutely critical that the Senate gets, the, the National Assembly gets this done and over with as quickly as possible, get it to the president's table, if possible, before the end of January. Today is the 19th of January, it's still possible, so that the president can then, you know, sign. Um, once that happens, then he has 30 days again. So if you get it to him before uh, the end of January, then he's got till the end of February to sign. And then, you know, um, we would know where we are. So if he refuses to sign again, then we know that, okay, this guy is up to no good. And then the, uh, the public opinion and pressure can be put upon the National Assembly to veto him. Because I think that it's absolutely critical that the next set of elections and the 2023 general elections are not run under the old um, law. All right. Uh, finally, before you go, what do you make of this uh, call by some uh, civil rights groups against um, consensus candidacy? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with them. You know, the consensus can candidacy thing is, um, is anything but democracy. <laughs> you know, 
um, it, it, it leaves room for how, how do you even determine what consensus is, you know? For me, I think it's ridiculous um, that you want to run elections for 200 million people, 200 million people, right? And then you basically sit down in the sitting room of one guy um, with maybe 10 people sitting around the table with him, and then they, they decide who is going to, who they are going to give a party ticket to. And because they call the shots in that party, they claim that it is consensus and nobody else can really stop them. You know, so um, it, it's, it's not really good. And I, and I think that, yes, um, um, the civil society groups are right in rejecting the inclusion of that consensus option, but I don't think that the Senate is going to back down on that. I think we're going to get that um, provision included in the new act. What we now need to do as members of civil society and as citizens is to put pressure on the political parties and say we do not want consensus candidacies. You know? And I know that people will say, oh, what does put pressure mean? How do you even do that? Well, there are ways. There are ways. You know, public opinion is very, very strong if you push it hard enough. Unfortunately, a lot of times Nigerians, the Nigerian society, Nigerians, the youth who are a huge number of people, you know, we don't exercise these powers um, consistently enough and with enough um, um, uh, cohesion to, 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 um, to take full advantage of the power that we have. All right, so if thank we you. do that, then we can reject the consensus issue, whether it's in the law or not. All right. Thank you, Mr. Shengu Shopito, for your time. Thank you for having me. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.